Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I finally finished this bad boy this today. It went, uh, took me a lot longer than I had planned. But it's done. I got all that Hebrew worked in. You do that much of it, you're going to have little things that little impurities or imperfections that you see all over and things that aren't centered and drive you nuts. But sometimes I know being a craftsman, it's making something functional and not beautiful. Sometimes it being functional is more important than the aesthetic. A lot of the time. I know um, working in the trades and being a contractor, I uh, always kind of worked on this <clears throat> kind of three leg approach to quality and what, what constitutes a quality project. Like, when the project is, is when you have a completed project, how do you gauge the quality of the said project? And for me, it's three major legs. Some people only see if it makes money, some people only see if it looks beautiful. But for me, the first leg is the money. Right? And you can mix time into that. How much time did it take? How much money did it cost? Right? How much will you profit? The next leg is the functionality. Does it do what it's supposed to do? Is it functional? Is it robust in its functionality? It's not going to crumble after three uses, kind of thing. You understand what I'm saying? And then the other leg being the aesthetic. You have two things that work equally as well, but one looks like a piece of shit, and the other one looks like a uh, royal Dalton clown or something. <laughs> Very beautiful. Only when you balance all those things is can you say it was qu a quality job. Or sometimes in order for the job to be quality, it has to meet certain conditions. It has to work in such a way that there's no way you'll be able to make that look beautiful without sacrificing the money, right? So I kind of went on in a tailspin about that whole concept. When it comes to this, it's functional. Uh, it looks pretty good, I think. So, just got to clean up the edges of it, singe the edges with the lighter, close up threads, and step one, good to go. I got one week to finish memorizing the Bornless Ritual. I'm pretty close. I'm leaving it down to the wire a little bit though, but uh, I need to make my apron. I need to make the pendant. I need to make a triangle. And oh, cats in the morning. Um, all those things I I have all the materials for. Shouldn't go too too bad. Um, I'm thinking the triangle and the apron. Maybe even the pendant. I don't know. I, uh, I bought a multicolored kit of Sharpies. I'm gonna do something similar for the apron that I did with this mat. I'm gonna use the projector that I got to just project the seal onto the apron. I got a piece of calf skin off of Amazon. <coughs> so, that one, and it, it, nothing is as big as this. Like this, this is quite the uh, feat. 
I think maybe it being so complicated to do like that is a deterrent and maybe something that you just need to prove that you're willing to go through this amount of effort to, for it to work, right? Uh, other than that, I'm exhausted, man. <clears throat> I've been over, this is day four now, I guess. It doesn't feel like it, man. When you work crazy shifts like that, 14 days on, 14 days off, you come home four days, gone. Like it, I don't, I don't remember what I did. Oh, I went and got a crown on my tooth yesterday. That was fun. Now I got a little piece, I got a, a fucking porcelain tooth. It's super slick. I'm gonna lick it with my tongue. Now I got a little tiny piece of my skull that's made out of toilet. That's nice. <sighs> yeah. That I, I bought mushrooms to take mushrooms because I'd never have that many days alone without my wife or kids around. But I, I got them in the mail. They came later than they were supposed to, so I missed the day that I was going to do it. I wanted to do it before I went to the dentist because I didn't want the mouth numbing or just tripping out about maybe if it goes wrong or something or they hit my nerve or something like that. I didn't want to think about any of that. Uh, I don't know. I talked to my mom. I talked to my sister since I've been home, and I just uh, couldn't muster up the the uh, enthusiasm. Everything in my gut, in my mind, and even like in tarot reads and shit. Everything was kind of giving me the thumbs up. I was seeing little mushroom guys synchronicities all over the house with the toad from Mario just kept appearing out of nowhere. Um, so I mean like everything was like go for it, but just uh, just my enthusiasm. I don't know what it was. It was just, and I was up really late last night with my sister drinking. So that didn't, I woke up late, I woke up at like 8.30, just feeling kind of crummy. Feeling real fat and gross, just been eating tons since I got home. Uh, that's the other thing, you come home and you just want to relax for a minute, but then a minute turns into four days very fast. And the next thing you know, I've been eating and drinking. I almost finished that bottle of scotch. It's not quite done yet. Probably have one, maybe two left. <clears throat> we'll say that the intermittent fasting, I have struggled with my weight my entire life, right from childhood. And I've tried so many things in my life and the only thing for actually losing weight and getting lean that I have ever had any uh, success with was drastic alterations to my diet. It was never some exercise thing or some supplement thing or anything like that. But when I was younger, I went on a very rigorous, 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 rigorous meal prepping thing for about a year at the gym and I had a lot of success with that. And then just these last few months, these last spring, um, really experimenting with the intermittent fasting. It would just eat one meal a day. And at first it was just like, I'm just gonna eat one meal. I can eat whatever I want, however much I want. But once I'm finished, once the fork's down and I'm full, done. And then a 24 hour clock starts, right? <clears throat> and you feel hungry, for sure. And sometimes it sucks, but we're in a very, well, where I am, we're all in a very unique situation where we are completely surrounded by food, 360 degrees. We're not going to starve to death. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you're never far from food. That's not a problem we have here. It, us not being far from food is the fucking problem. And I have always just been... I've always eaten a lot. Just, eat, 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 just bottomless. Sometimes I'm already thinking about pouring another bowl of cereal on the first bite of my first bowl. You know, like there's something that happens in my head. It's like, I'm gonna eat this whole bowl of cereal. And then after that, I'm gonna pour another one and eat it right away. It's like, what the fuck? Do I have a tape room or something? What's that all about? I think a big part of it's just addictions. And I use it for coping with, uh, not just whatever, coping with uh, stress, coping with emotions, anxiety, things like that, I guess. Well, I'd like to do something more ambitious right now. My house needs a good clean over. Uh, I'm really, I'm really exhausted, man. My sister was talking last night and there was a point there at around 1130 or midnight, I had to pull, pull out my uh, nasal methanol inhaler thing, start sniffing it because I thought I was going to fucking pass out, like I couldn't hold myself up. But one week, going to pursue this ritual. I've got everything in place, I've got the time, they've got the moon phase, the moon day, the moon is void, won't be void of course, it's the proper days for invoking the demon, uh, I have all my intent written out, I almost got the ritual memorized, yeah it's getting close. Love is the law, love under well.